Hi, everybody. My name is Amil Kirsch, and I am a dev advocate at Incredibuild. Today, I want to talk about compiler optimization. How the C++ optimizer can optimize our code. So let's just dive into a piece of code, and I will share with you my Collegiate online compiler. Let's do that. I hope you can see my screen. And in this example, I have here a multi-threaded program. And there is a reason why I show you a multi-threaded program. I will explain shortly. We have here a function called adder, which adds number into the global variable sum. And the global variable sum is being approached here in this program from several threads in parallel without locking, which is not good. We know that. Uh, we have here a race condition, and the result can be anything. But the idea is to check what is the actual result. So sum is a global variable, as I said, and adder runs a loop and adds some multiplication of the index i and some x into sum. And in the main, we uh, launch 10 threads. Each thread runs adder, and all the threads, all the 10 threads, add numbers into the same global variable sum. So if we want to check what would be the results, um, probably if we run it only once, it might be that we will get the expected result, which we can calculate and see what happens if there is a lock. But if we run the program more than once, we will see that the results are indeed not always the same. So what I did here is to uh, run a small bash script. Here it is. I run the program 500 times, and then I sort the results and count the unique results, which eventually what I have is number of times which I got each certain output. So we can see that 490 times out of the 500, I get some result, which is the expected one, which is the right calculation if I do have a lock. But we do have 10 other results, which are something else. That's nice. Um, and it did show that, yeah, there is a need here either to use some as atomic integer or to use a lock. But my question here is how come we got all the results as a mul multiplication of 50? How come that, you know, we don't have other results like uh, 267, 355, 267, 384, or many other results that can come here? And the answer is compiler optimization. Something being done here by the optimizer turns the result to be around the 10 multiplication of 10 or multiplication of 50 in the result. And the thing that is being done by the optimizer is loop unrolling. The optimizer sees this loop and then it says, well, I'm not sure that you actually need a loop here. Maybe I can calculate the entire thing without a loop. So the function adder becomes just a single calculation and the loop is gone which is called loop unrolling. Once the loop is gone, then the competition between the threads, the race condition is on the entire calculation, which is being calculated by the optimizer. What would be the sum inside the loop, which is in um, multiplication of 50 or something like that. Now, can we check this theory? Well, we can. Uh, let's try to change the optimization flag from minus 02 to minus 00 and compile again. So I'm changing here the optimization flag to minus 00, compiling again. And we can see 
that the results are now much more spread across all sorts of numbers because there is no loop unrolling now and the loop actually is in the code. So we actually go into the loop and the race condition now is on each addition inside the loop and not on a single calculation. And we do have most of the times the same number that we got before, but the others are quite more spread. If we go to see the assembly code, we can use Compiler Explorer for that, another online tool. And we can see that minus O0 and minus O2 on the same code results with different assembly code. With a minus O0, the adder function that we see here do have a loop. The loop is here. We see that um, we go to the code that has some uh, calculation, and then there is a comparison here at this line. And if the comparison is greater than a certain number, then you um, continue. Otherwise, you jump back to the loop. So this is the loop that we see. And in the code that uses the minus O2 optimization, the assembly code, the assembly commands inside the adder function are, are just the calculation. One line of calculation or two lines, two commands of calculation, and that's it without any loop inside. So this is the loop unrolling that we see here. So we saw today the optimization done by the C++ compiler called loop unrolling. And we saw how it affects, in our example, a multi-threaded application. It didn't save us from a race condition because the race condition is in the adder function anyhow. But race condition behaved um, a bit differently than if we do not have a loop unrolling. This is for today. Um, we will continue on in next talks to see what the optimizer can do for us. So thank you for listening. Thank you for being with us today. See you.